If you can dream it, you can build it. Welcome to Build Your Dream. Suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet outside in the universe. As the stealth bombers rolled off the assembly line, rumors surfaced that the military was test flying recovered alien craft at a secret government base known as Area 51. Welcome back to the channel, episode number four of the Build Your Dream series. You've been along for the ride for a few episodes, and you can tell we built some pretty cool firearms. We started off with a custom Sig Sauer P365, moved to a couple Generation 3 Glock 19s. So what did we build today? The Generation 4 Glock 17. Full size 9mm, 17 round capacity right from the factory. What can we do to make it better? Now I say this in every single one of my Build Your Dream episodes. When you build, you build with a purpose. Whether that be for combat, personal protection, competition, you know you got some planning out to do. When I look at a stock firearm or a strip frame, I see a blank canvas. There's endless possibilities. And that is what's so cool about this. When people go and build a house, they don't just wing it. You know, they come up with a plan. Building for a purpose. Build something that's going to be applicable to you. These Glocks, come on. These are like Legos, erector sets for grown ass men. You can build whatever you want. Before we dive into this firearm, let's give a shout out to the channel's official clothing sponsor, Vigilant and Humble. You can use my discount code 715 Tactical and it'll save you 15% on your entire order. Whether you want to pick up a hat, some t shirts, sweatshirts, face coverings, stickers, patches, whatever it may be, go ahead and use that code to save some good money and you support an awesome business. Let's dive into this Glock 17. If you've been following the series, we're not strangers to Zafiri Precision. I think it's safe to say I've probably become a little bit of a Zafiri fanboy, but it's for good reason. Made right here in the United States. Badass slide designs. Super tight tolerances. The quality is there. I mean, I can keep going on the list. In all honesty, I think this is gonna be probably my most favorite slide from Zafiri. You can see the lightning cuts on the side, has the side windows, and it also has a pretty big window on top. I don't know if you guys realize how much weight that reduces on a firearm. If you're not familiar with aftermarket slides, it's gonna look a little foreign to you. You're probably gonna be like, um, dude, you're missing some pretty big chunks out of your slide. Weight reduction. Now weight reduction can come with a lot of different issues. Cycling issues making your gun more snappy, more recoil. You know, you think about it, the heavier a firearm is, the less felt recoil you're gonna have. So what was the purpose when I built this Glock 17? At first look, it looks like it would be a combat application firearm. It's not. I've never built a competition gun before. I always wanted to build a race gun. Go fast. Ricky Bobby, I wanna go fast. You know, everybody wants to go fast when it comes to shooting. But can they be proficient when they do it? Yeah, 98% of the skill comes from being a skilled shooter, but trust me, that other 2% heavily relies on your firearm, the way you have it set up. Now, this is my personal opinion when I say this. Keep that in mind. You know, you hear a lot of people say, buy a cheap firearm, invest in training. I'm not opposed to that because training is going to get you where you need to be. But when you get proficient with your training, you're going to need the tool to keep up with you. You know what I mean? The Cerakote job on the slide was done by Deadlock Coatings. They've been doing quite a few firearms for me lately. These guys do a quality job when it comes to a coat service. There's no high or raised spots. You can run your finger over the multicolor and it's totally flat. It's as smooth as could be. I felt Cerakote jobs in the past where they layer different colors and it kind of raises up off the slide. You can feel it to a touch. That's not quality. When you get something that's smooth all the way around, there's no light spots. That is a quality coat job. I love the pattern on here too. 
This is a new release from Deadlock Coatings. I'm not 100% sure on the colors that they used, but whatever they did, it's working. To complement the Zafiri slide, we ended up going with a titanium nitride, Zafiri Precision, fluted threaded barrel. You guys know me by now, I'm a huge fan of titanium nitride. You know, they say life is better when it's dipped in gold. I know looks aren't everything when it comes to building a firearm, but you do want it to be aesthetically pleasing. You know, I've seen some pretty ugly guns out there, but they shoot phenomenal. But when I build something, not only for an applicable use, I want it to be an aesthetically pleasing looking firearm. Pretty safe to say we accomplished that. Now you can see the flutes right through that top window, also through the side window cuts. And the reason we went with a threaded barrel was so we can run a compensator. Compensator is going to help you shoot flatter. It's going to reduce felt recoil. You know, I'll put it in simple terms. Newton's third law. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Let's apply that to a compensator. When you direct the gases upward through the ports of the compensator, it's going to push your firearm down. The muzzle's going to be a little bit flatter when you shoot. It's not rocket science. It's only physics. This compensator is by a company called Cyanide Design, and this is their Rook compensator. Very cool looking comp. And this one's in their FDE finish. And I think we did a pretty good job at matching with the rest of the color scheme of this firearm. The beautiful thing about these cyanide comps. 95% of the time, you're not going to have to switch your guide rod spring weight. Stock weight. I've seen a lot of compensators where you have to start dropping down your spring weight to about 15, hell, sometimes even 13 pounds to be cycling reliably. Not in this case. This thing hasn't jammed up once. I had no firing, no cycling issues. This thing's running flat and it's running reliably. All with 115 grain, range ammunition, stock guide rod spring weight. I mean, come on. That's almost unheard of in the compensator world. It just makes life way easier because you're not sitting there fiddling with other parts, trying to find the correct spring weight. Let's check out this clip and you can see for yourself how flat this firearm shoots with this compensator. If you've been thinking about dabbling in the world of compensators, you know what's been crossing your mind? I would highly recommend that you check out Cyanide Design, give one of these Rook compensators a try. I can almost guarantee you're going to be as pleased as I am with these. The Trijicon SRO, Specialized Reflex Optic. This is Trijicon's newest red dot, and I am a huge freaking fan of this thing. Compared to the RMR, way bigger field of view, hence the big circular design. It's not the prettiest looking optic in the market, I'll tell you that. It's quite ugly. You know, this kind of reminds me, what's that dude's name? Jar Jar Binks from Star Wars. Kind of reminds me of his eyes. In fact, right when these things first came out, I don't know who did it, but somebody made a meme and I had a picture of Jar Jar Binks and two Trijicon SROs over his eyes. I died when I saw that. And now that is forever burned in my head. I cannot unsee that. I picked up this Trijicon SRO from Optics Planet. Super fast shipping, came to my door in about a week. One of my favorite features about the Trijicon SRO is that it has a top loading battery compartment. Gone are the days of the RMR where you have to totally take your optic off of your slide, pop in the battery through the bottom, remount your optic and re-zero it. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of advantages to the RMR over the SRO. This optic is not duty rated. It's not nearly as tough as the RMR, and that comes down to the design. With this optic being around, it's gonna take quite a bit of impact wherever you drop it on. With the design of the RMR, it's designed to take hard impacts. If you plan on running this for duty use, try your hardest not to drop your gun, because there's a good chance you're gonna shatter the lens in this SRO. Big design difference. Major design difference. I'm gonna try to put this as simply as I can. Duty use, competition use. Now, the field of view on the Trijicon SRO compared to the RMR is phenomenally different. You're gonna have a way broader field of view with the SRO, and that's great for competition. You want as much field of view as you can possibly get. I have never had such an easier time picking up a red dot than I have with this SRO. This thing's incredible for that. It's incredibly fast for your eye to pick it up. Present 
it's right there in front of your face. If you can't find that dot right away, I don't know what to tell you, man, but this thing is stupid quick to acquire. God, I love this thing. The SRO is night vision compatible. It's got multiple brightness adjustments. You know, I'm a huge fan of Trijicon. Made right here in the USA, Christian company. I know that's not gonna mean a lot to a lot of people out there, me personally. I think that's awesome. Trijicon has made a name for themselves over the years. In my personal opinion, it's hard to beat a Trijicon. Granted, you pay a lot for them, but it is worth every penny. And my philosophy is buy once, cry once. And that's exactly what you do with Trijicon. The clarity in the glass, the lifespan, the ruggedness, it's hard to beat. If you're interested in picking up one of these Trijicon SROs, I have a personalized discount code through Optics Planet where you can save 5%. I'll leave that pinned down in the first comment. Now that discount code is good on the entire Optics Planet store, not just for this optic. And using that code does help out the channel. The more that code gets used, the better deals I can get to review new products for you, showcase different items. It's a win-win. Save you some money, help out the channel. Teamwork makes the dream work. To go along with the Trijicon SRO, we're running some suppressor height Trijicon night sights. Now these are tritium filled, so they give you a nice bright green sight picture in low light to no light situations. Usually in order to run a red dot, you're gonna have to run some suppressor height sights if you wanna be able to see those sights as backups. You can absolute co-witness right to that front post. It just makes your life a lot easier. Now these aren't cheap plastic sights. These are steel sights. This rear sight has a blacked out rear with the two tritium dots. And your front post is gonna have your standard white dot. Super easy for me to pick up. My personal preference, I'll usually like to run an orange ring in the front, an orange dot. For some reason, that color orange is so stupid easy for my eye to pick up. I can present that firearm. My eye is directed right towards that orange front post. Some colors are just easier to pick up for people. Myself, I'm an orange guy. I like orange. Tungsten guide rods. Glock store, Lenny McGill, San Diego, California. Cool guy, cool company. I've had a lot of experience with their products. And it also has a flat dark earth cap to match the rest of the firearm. We're not heathens. We like stuff to look good. We like it to match. I've featured these quite a few times on different episodes in the past. You know, we're no strangers to the Glock store either. Why do I like running tungsten over your traditional plastic guide rod? I highly doubt a lot of people have seen it happen. It takes quite a few rounds to do this. But your plastic factory guide rods, they can start bending. They can even break on you after thousands of rounds. You know, you gotta switch them out. These tungsten guide rods, not only do they add that extra weight, but these are not gonna bend, they're not gonna break, you're not gonna have issues with them. I absolutely refuse to run anything else in my firearms than a tungsten guide rod. That added weight, just kind of weight distribution, you know, you add a little bit more weight to the front of that firearm, it's gonna help with recoil reduction. You can pick these up from anywhere I want to say 75 to 100 bucks from Lenny McGill's Glock store. I highly recommend these. Way superior than your OEM plastic guide rods. The Glock store does offer different colored caps. So if you're trying to match the scheme of your firearm, like we did with this guy, you have a few different colors to pick from. I love that flat dark earth. It looks so good with the rest of this gun. Let's talk about the internals that I use on the slide. I decided to go with the Zev Technologies Pro Parts Kit. It has our skeletonized striker. It has light and springs. Competition use. When it comes to competition, you're gonna want lighter pulls. You're gonna want smoother, lighter operation. Now, with the Zev Technology spring kit, I haven't had any issues. Everything operates the way it should. I don't have any light primer strikes with the skeletonized striker. None of that stuff exists. I know a lot of people, they don't like to switch out their cover plates because believe it or not, you can have issues arise from a bad cover plate. I've had it happen. I'm not sure if you have, but me personally, I've had it happen. I've had cover plates in the past that don't fit properly. They don't snap into place. One thing that I will say is that when you're installing a cover plate, you need to hear that snap. You need to hear it lock in. If it's not locked in, you run a chance of that slide plate coming off. And you gotta remember, everything's under pressure there. It's spring loaded. So as soon as that cover plate flies off, you're gonna have some parts coming out at a million miles an hour. Good luck finding them. I'm gonna have to say that we achieved our goal with this slide. You know, we wanted to make something for competition. Skeletonized striker, 
light and spring weights, tungsten guide rod, compensator, lightning cuts on the slide, Trigicon SRO, suppressor height sights to co-witness. I think we did a damn good job. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything that you would change about this to suit yourself personally. I'm curious to see what you have to say. Let's move on to this frame. Look at that beautiful chainmail stippling. Personally, one of my favorite textures when it comes to stippling a firearm. That chainmail, it's not too aggressive, yet it really makes a difference on your grip. If you don't have a firearm that's comfortable in your hand without gloves, I would say you kind of failed. The stippling was done by a company called Weichel Armament. If you remember the Space Blaster 19 episode, the Cerakote job was done by Weichel Armament. Now, to the best of my knowledge, Weichel Armament is no longer doing texturing services. They've gone to full-time Cerakoting. And honestly, that sucks. Because personally, I think their frame texturing service was one of the best in the game. It's hard to beat those super clean borders. The texture is perfect. There's no raised areas. It's phenomenal. I mean, they did killer work and it breaks my heart to know that they're not doing framework anymore. So if this really turns you on, I'm sorry to say, I do not believe that you can get your frame textured by them anymore. Full-time Cerakoters. But they're doing a hell of a job. And we're back at it again with Titanium Nitride. We had the Titanium Nitride Glock Store Pin Kit and Extended Control Kit. All honesty, I don't use anything else besides the Glock Store Extended Control and Pin Kit. Terran Tactical Innovations. This is their carry Magwell. I know I said I built this for competition. Personally, I am not a huge fan of those gigantic competition Magwells, like the Terran Tactical Lightning Magwell or the Big Zev Competition Magwells. Those are just too big for me. I'm not a fan of that. Smaller design, not so intrusive. They work great. They funnel your mag in there every single time. Places it right where it needs to be. You don't have the issue of getting hung up or caught up on your frame. Highly recommend that you try a mag well if you haven't. I know Taryn, Mr. Taryn Butler, kind of went through some uh, accusations. I'm not sure if you've seen the video that came out a few months back. I have one word to say. Precious. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that video was a little creepy. Kinda gave me the heebie-jeebies. It was cringy. Well, let's put that to the side. We're not here to talk about Terran's love life. We're here to talk about his products. Terran, you got some good products? Is your head a little f***ed up? Yeah, maybe. I hope that works out for you, man. Terran Tactical. What's the first thing you think of when you hear Terran Tactical Innovations? Or Terran Butler? John Wick? You know? He's the guy that trained Keanu Reeves for all the John Wick movies. Hell of a shooter, too. I don't know if you've ever seen this guy shoot, but holy sh**, this guy can knock him down. He's a pretty big guy, too. You know, he's not the smallest, most fit guy out there. This guy can shoot. I would not want to be in a gunfight with Terran Butler or Keanu Reeves. Like 99% of my other firearms, Tyrant Designs, Mag Release. The texture on there feels perfect, the tolerances are nice and tight, doesn't get caught up, no hang up, drops your magazine every single time. Highly recommend you check out Tyrant Designs. But what else do we have from Tyrant? The Glock 17 Mag Extension. This guy's going to take your stock 17 round Glock magazine all the way up to a 22 round capacity more capacity the better, especially for competition use. The design on these mag extensions is pretty sweet. It locks right to the mag body by that little detent right there. If you want to take it off, all you have to simply do is depress that detent and this mag extension will slide right off. The installation ease of these things is stupid easy. It's super fast. There's no screws to finick with. You know, you don't have to take a bottom plate off or anything like that. Simply put your magazine body right onto the extension, push in that detent, and it'll slide and lock right into place. That's innovation. That's hard to beat. That's what I like to see in the two-way community. Innovative products. You know, work smarter, not harder. We have an ETS Group 17 round magazine. Huge fan of ETS Group. Never had any issues with their magazines. They feed reliably. And I like the fact that they're clear. 
being able to see your rounds through there, you know, it gives you the warm fuzzy feeling. It's just badass, it's cool. Down to the trigger on this Glock 17, I decided to go with the Zev Pro Trigger. This Zev Trigger came with everything that you need for a perfect swap out. Came with your ejector housing, came with your trigger bar, connector, came with the trigger itself, and this thing is stupid light. I know Zeb Technologies isn't the most affordable company out there. You know, their stuff's pretty high-end, and usually with high-end products, it comes with a high-end price. Like I said with the Trigicon, you get what you pay for. You buy once, cry once, and you move on. You know, I've had some Zeb slides in the past. Wow. That's all I can say is wow. Super smooth, super tight tolerances. You know, I'm a big fan of Zev Technologies. And I'm also a huge fan of these flat face triggers. You probably won't see me with a standard curved face trigger on any of my firearms, whether it's on a handgun, AR platform. I love the flat. The pad of my finger sits so naturally on there and you can get to rocking with those things. I mean, you can really cook some rounds. Personal preference though, if you like curved triggers, hey, I'm not hating on you. We like what we like, individuality. You know what, let's pull out our Wheeler trigger pull gauge and see how light it really is. I'm gonna leave a link below to Wheeler's products and you can check out all the different tools that they have to offer. I'm telling you, these things are quality. They make life way easier if you're doing any sort of gunsmithing work. Now we also had a custom holster made for this firearm. Handmade from start to finish by Gunfighters Incorporated. Fabric wrapped with multi-cam just to match the rest of the belt. This is becoming one of my favorite holsters. I decided to go with the open bottom so we can still holster with a compensator. Fits perfect. The retention on these things, just phenomenal. I love that audible click that you get with Kydex. Now I do have the Molly straps on the back of this holster just to be able to run on this belt. When it comes down to a holster, you got a million different companies to choose from. You know, today it seems like everybody and their grandmother is making holsters. There's things that set companies apart and it's the Q word, it's quality. You know, I've seen a lot of crappy, junky looking holsters out there and I'm sure you have too. After doing this for a while, you kind of acquire a taste to the finer things in the gun community. Gunfighters Inc. is one of those finer things. I'll leave a link down in the video description to their website. You can check out their holsters, see if they got something that'll work for you. You know, these things are handmade from start to finish. The attention to quality and detail that Gunfighters Incorporated is putting into their holsters is top of the game. I have one for my CZ P10C. It's an inside the waistband Wraith holster. I love that thing. They have tons of different prints you can choose from. You can go fabric wrapped if you want. I highly recommend that you check out Gunfighters Incorporated for your next holster. You know, try it out. Tell me what you think. For storage, my trusty Condition One case. They have virtually anything you can imagine for a case pick and pluck foam inserts and you can customize that foam to whatever firearm that you need. Waterproof, durable as Check these guys out, you won't be disappointed. Let's talk about how this firearm shot. See that smile on my face? It shot that good, that's what I'll say. Drawing from that Gunfighter's Inc. holster, super smooth draw. The full size frame on the Glock 17 you know, I got bigger hands, I got some pretty big mitts, and this thing fits like a glove. You know, when you build a competition gun, you want that buttery smooth operation. You want that light and trigger pull, the light and springs. It all comes into play, it all ties together at the end. Running that compensator, it's going to help you shoot flatter, faster follow-up shots. The broad field of view on the Trigicon SRO, that dot is right there every single time. Like I said, every individual part ties together at the end. It makes one complete weapon. And that's exactly what we did here. If you're looking into building a firearm, I recommend that you check out any of these companies. Build with a purpose. 
have a dream, build that dream. Guys, as always, thank you for stopping in, stay vigilant, and I will see you next time.